your hand, lift up your voice this morning. Let's go before the Lord in thanksgiving. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify his holy name. He has called us into his banqueting hall this morning. Let's worship his name. Let's thank him. Let's magnify his holy name. Father, Lord, we give you praise. 51 weeks in the year 2023. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been good to us. Lord, we give you praise. Today is our Hosanna service. Let's magnify his holy name. Let's glorify his holy name. When we shout Hosanna to him, his glory is coming down in a way we have never seen it before. His blessing is coming down for every one of us in a way that we have never seen it before. His grace is coming down upon us today in a way that we have never seen it before. Therefore, let's thank him this morning. Let's glorify his holy name. Let's thank him for his presence. He got here before, before each one of us. Let's thank him this morning for what he has in stock for every one of us. Let's thank him this morning for the blessings that he has prepared for you and I. Let's give him praise. Let's glorify him. Let's magnify him. This is a special day. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Jesus, we glorify your holy name. It is the eve of Christmas. Let's magnify him. Let's magnify him. Let's worship him. Let's adore his holy name. Father, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we glorify your name. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God. You have sent for us and we have come. You've sent for us because you have a blessing to give unto each one of us. Father, we glorify your name. We magnify you, Jesus. Let's thank him for the word that will be coming our way this morning. Let's thank him the need meeting war, the sent war, the season war, the word that has the capacity to turn situations, the word that has the capacity to lift us from where we are and take us to where he has ordained for us. Father, we glorify your name. Almighty God, we magnify your name. We thank you, Almighty God, because every segment of the services today will be speaking your grace. Every segment will be speaking your blessings. Every segment will be communicating to your people that which you have in store for each one of us. Father, we glorify your name. Almighty God, we magnify your name. Are you thanking him? Are you thanking him for the delivery of your own special package this service this morning? Are you thanking him? Father, we glorify your name. Almighty God, there is not like unto you. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. I know you have a testimony. Please, you will do well to go to any of the major entrances at the tabernacle to document your testimony. Today, the Lord God of heaven is visiting with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, put those hands together for him as we receive the choir.
together. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 
somebody shout Hosanna. Please give Jesus a big, big hand of praise and be seated. In this special Hosanna service, we shall be calling ourselves to worship from Psalms 103. Psalm 103, we are reading responsively from verse 1 through to verse 8. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the heroes? Verse 6 The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts. Unto the children of Israel. And verse 8 together loudly. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. You are welcome. Give Jesus an open a big hand of praise. Please, let's listen to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this first service. Number one, good news. Tomorrow, Monday, 25th December, 2023, is Christmas Day. We shall be gathered as a congregation to celebrate the greatest gift of all kind, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We shall be holding only two services. And the time, 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. Number two, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty acts of God at testimonies at davidoyedipo.com and testimonies at lfcww.org as shown on the screen. Number three, praise the Lord. Be reminded that all Shiloh 2023 teachings Messages from previous Shiloh events and other spiritual resources are available for our edification at any of the Dominion book stands. Number four, Covenant Hour Prayer continues Tuesday to Saturday, the time 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Our midway communion service holds this Wednesday in all zonal centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with a communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number six, good news. Eight intending couples were this weekend. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time is 11 a.m. Number seven, Winner Satellite Fellowship. In view of the mass travels, during this festive season, our Winner Satellite Fellowship weekly program is on hold until January 2024. Number eight, good news. 2023-2024 crossover night service. This holds on Sunday, the 31st December 2023. It shall be our prophetic entrance into 2024. The time is 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Nigerian time. Number nine, good news. 2024, 21 days of prayer and fasting holds between January 8th to January 28th, 2024. Prepare to partake of this spiritual expedition as it shall be a time of unusual encounters from the Lord. In this service, it is testimony time. Please let Akin Wumi Musiliu Abayomi Akin Wumi Musiliu Abayomi 
come forward and share his testimony with the brethren. Let's go over to the announcement as we conclude. Number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our special end of the year Thanksgiving service. We shall be returning with a heart of gratitude for the multitude of the blessings released and received from the Lord all through the year 2023. While securing the year 2024 with our thanksgiving and praise. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Remember to come along with your family members and other loved ones. Be sure not to miss this. We shall be holding only two services and the times is 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. In this Hosanna service this morning, it is testimony time. Please let Akin Wumi Musliu Abayomi come for his testimony. Please put your hands together for Jesus, your name, and straight to your testimony. My name is uh, Musliu Akin Wumi Abayomi. Um, for the past 25 years, I couldn't hear very well. But on Friday night during Shiloh, the encounter night, as Papa instructed us to put our hands where we needed our healing, I did, and for now, I can hear very well from anywhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's listen to this documented testimony, and you shall return with your own blessing. Amen. Financial breakthrough via sacrifice. For 10 years, I was financially challenged. Then I decided to serve God and the interests of his kingdom. I gave out my apartment for WSF and sold transportation seed every week. I came for Shiloh and a lady testified of how she sold 20% of her salary as Shiloh sacrifice. And God changed her story. I was desperate for a change, and I told God I will sow 40% of my monthly salary, which I did. Then, suddenly, God showed up. Amen. He gave me a real estate business, and in that particular real estate company I was working, he gave me, they gave me an award and an SUV Jeep. To God alone be all the glory. The testifier is Fasami Tinolua. Please put your hands together for Jesus. You are next online for testimony this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. One more time for those amazing testimonies. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand of praise. Now today, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into this service this morning. If today is your first time worshiping here at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday morning like this, may I request that you kindly rise on your feet and remain standing. Please, all across the Tabernacle, please rise on your feet. Today is your first Sunday here at Faith Tabernacle Church. Let's give the Lord a bigger hand. For these precious people as they rise up everywhere, to God alone be all the glory. A welcome package along with a card will be given to you to fill in the course of this welcome. And as soon as you receive your own copies of both the welcome package and the card, you may please be comfortably seated and commence filling the card right now. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of this church, and his servant, the apostle, over this great commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained a house of liberation by a divine mandate where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil and he confers breakthroughs on all members, even as they believe. God has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here 
For the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as a day to obey them. Church, let's say louder amen to them. I want to welcome you today to this breakthrough family. And may today be your entry into the realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you again, welcome home. Church, let's give the Lord a big, big hand. May I at this time request that you suspend filling those cards, please, and rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. All our first-time worshipers, kindly rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, again this morning, we thank you for these precious ones that you brought here by yourself this Sunday morning. We acknowledge that no one can come except the Father draws. You drew them here this morning to bless them. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare every first time I hear on this Sunday morning supernaturally blessed. Whatever they left back at home as a source of concern, let it be that upon their return, let such issues be converted to open testimonies. If there be any one of them that is not yet born again, let the encounter and the visitation in this service mark their own salvation. But by all means, let it be that every first-timer is returning with a first-time dimension of testimonies. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Church, our amen can be louder. Please be comfortably seated to all our first-time worshippers. Kindly complete filling those cards and pass them to the officials beside you. One more time, you are welcome. God richly bless you. Yes, somebody shout a loud Hosanna. Right now in this service, it's offering time. So shall it be for us all. Please properly put together, if you haven't done so, your worship seed and any other kind of seed you have brought today to worship the Almighty God in this Hosanna service. Make sure your seed, you have each of them clearly labeled. Remember, you can give in cash. If you are doing so, you should be properly packaged in an envelope and clearly labeled. You can also give in check able to fit Tabernacle Canaan land. You can as well take advantage of any of our electronic giving platforms. Please check the screen. All the required information you find there right now. Praise God. The scripture tells us in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Let us not be willing while doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Say it me, I shall reap. Say it again like you believe it. The loudest you can. Can you say believing amen to that? That shall be our portion as we give up all today in Jesus' name. Please rise up on your feet with this understanding, confidently, with a heart of gratitude. Lift up your seat to God. Thank him for putting seed in your hand. And thank you because according to his word, you shall reap. You shall reap. Your due season is at the door. Thank him. Praise him. Glorify his name. Worship his majesty. Your seed is living in your hand, but you shall reap it. You shall reap it. You and I shall reap it. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted. Heavenly Father, it's a privilege for us to come into your house today with seed in our hands. Let our seed be acceptable. For every giver, every tither, according to your word, we shall reap. This seed is living in our hands, but we shall reap it back. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Louder and believing, amen. Please take your seat comfortably, cast your seat with joy, and let's welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir for their administration.
no man can do. You have done for me what no man can do. You have done for me what no man can do. You have done for me.
Hallelujah. Will you lift your hand to heaven and let us begin to give glory and praise unto the name of our good God this morning. Appreciate him and celebrate him from the depth of your heart. What a faithful God. What an awesome God. What a mighty God. What a glorious Father. Come on, lift your hand, lift your voice, and appreciate him from the depth of your heart. Lord, you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We have come to give you the praise, the glory, the honor, the adoration. We have come to give thanks. We have come to give praise. We have come to give glory. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. Lift your hand, lift your voice and give him the glory. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Now ask him for an encounter this morning. I've come here to receive your word. Speak to me, Lord, like never before. Let your word come forth in my direction, establishing my change of level. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, this morning we are grateful for the privilege, the honor, the opportunity you have given to us to stand in your presence. Thank you for all that you have done for all that you are doing and for all that you will do accept our thanksgiving in the name of jesus christ this morning our eyes are fixed on you let your word today come forth with power let every one of our lives be changed supernaturally we give all the praise and glory to your name because we know it is done already in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Yeah. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. If that hand is for Jesus, it will be bigger than that. He deserves it. Thank you, Lord. A line of teachings for this month has been understanding the wonders of thanksgiving understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. It's important that we are reminded that thanksgiving is a divine commandment. We are commanded by God to give thanks. In the book of Psalm chapter 150 and verse 6, it said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That means that whoever still has life, God demands praise. So praise is a commandment of God. But it's also important that we are reminded that every commandment of God is ordained for our blessing. God does not command us to his benefit. God has nothing to gain from his commandment to us. His commandment to us is an avenue for him to bless us. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. The Bible tells us there, it says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and verse 17. It says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. So whatever we see in scriptures are ordained for our profiting. They are ordained for our blessing. They are ordained for our change of level. 
He said it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? He said in verse 17 that the man of God may be perfect. And I like the next phrase, thoroughly furnished. So, the more we engage with God's commandment, the more he furnishes us. It is one thing for a house to be finished. It is another thing for the house to be furnished. When a man finishes obedience to God's commandment, God furnishes his life. Furnishing is for comfort. Furnishing is for convenience. Furnishing is for enjoyment. It is when man completes his commitment to God's commandment that God furnishes or decorates him. My prayer today is that as you and I engage with this commandment of thanksgiving, God will begin furnishing every department of our lives. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. But it's important to understand that no scriptural provision can change your story beyond your depth of understanding. It is our understanding that determines how outstanding our experience is in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, the Bible says, he said that he that received the seed on good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. As a result of that understanding, he bears fruit, bringing forth some hundred, some sixty, some thirty. What is the difference between one level of productivity to the other is the depth of understanding. This is why the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So everyone is changed according to how clearly they can see. You see, sight in the realm of the spirit is likened to understanding. This is why we are told in Ephesians 1 verse 18, it said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. So there is a demand for us to be enlightened with understanding on every subject of scriptures. And that includes the subject of thanksgiving. As simple as it is, it is unfathomable in terms of depth. Every spiritual mystery is fundamentally simple, but unimaginably deep. Fundamentally simple. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, the Bible tells us there, it says, But I fear lest by any means that the serpent began him through his subtlety, it says, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So every principle, every mystery of the kingdom is fundamentally simple, but is unimaginably deep. Why? Romans 11, 33. All the depth, both of the wisdom and of the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Somebody say, why are we talking about thanksgiving over and over and over and over again? Why? Because there is still something to see. And the better you see, the better you live. There is still something to see. The clearer you see, the brighter your life. There is still something to see. The greater your sight, the greater the height. There is still something to see. Lift your hand to heaven this morning. Say with me, Lord, open my eyes. Say louder like you mean it, Lord, open my eyes. That's why the psalmist said in the book of Psalm chapter 47 and verse 7. He said, for God is the king of all the earth. When you want to sing praises, sing it with what? Understanding. Sing it with understanding. So there is a demand for understanding in the midst of praise. That means two people can be dancing to the same song. In fact, the two of them can be dancing the same style. But each one is having a different experience. 
The experience is not determined by what you are seeing on the outside. It is what that person is seeing from the inside. You must understand that when it comes to a life in the spirit, it is from inside out. It is the depth of your internal understanding that determines your external manifestation. My prayer this morning is that for each one of us, God will open our eyes. I pray again for each one of us that this morning, God will open our eyes. I pray that for each one of us, this morning, the 24th of December, God will open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thanksgiving, praise, celebration, appreciation of God demands understanding. This is why the psalmist said, give me understanding and I will live. Give me understanding. Give me understanding. And our understanding requires opening. If you look at the scripture, the Bible said, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So understanding is not the product of intellectual exertion. It is God that opens our understanding. I pray again for each one of us that this morning, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. I said, I pray that God will open the eyes of our understanding. Amen. Now, it's important that we begin by recognizing why. Why do we give God thanks? It has been said that where the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So why? What is the reason? Why do we give God thanks? Let's recognize, first of all, that we owe God thanks both as individuals and as a church. It is a debt that we owe. It is a debt that we owe. We owe God thanks. That's the first thing we must understand. So the number one reason why we must give God thanks is because it is a debt that we owe. It is a debt that we owe. It is a debt that we owe. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Look at what the scripture tells us here. It said, for we are bound to give thanks always to God. We are bound. We are bound. We are bound. We are indebted. To give God thanks always. We are indebted. We must recognize that when it comes to the subject of thanksgiving, it is a continuous debt that we owe. It's a continuous debt that we owe. We must recognize that both as an individual and as a church, thanksgiving is a debt. We owe it to God to give thanks. That is why when those 10 lepers were cleansed in Luke chapter 17, the Bible tells us beginning from verse 17 to 19, when one of them returned, Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? We are denied. None has returned to give glory to God except for this stranger. So Jesus was making it clear that when it comes to every act of God, it leaves man with a debt of thanks. It leaves man with a debt. So there is no day that that debt will have been completed. That is why he said we are bound always. We are bound always to give thanks. We are bound always to give thanks unto God. There is no day where we are not bound to give thanks. No matter what you think is happening around you, you owe God thanks. Every day, in every situation, in everything. This is why thanksgiving must become a lifestyle. Shout hallelujah. This is why it must become a lifestyle. And you know, uh, those of us that understand the financial system, you recognize that uh, if you owe a person 
and that debt, you have not been paying it, you will not want to see the person. True? The last person you want to see is that person. So, there is a fear of that person in your heart. If they knock the door, and the knock sounds like the knock of that person, your heart beats boom. If you hear a voice, and the voice sounds like the voice of that person, your heart skips a beat. Even if you are walking on the road and a car passes and it is like the car of that person, even your steps begin to meander. Why? Because you owe him. Now listen, every day on the earth, you have a debt of thanks. Do you want to enter heaven with debt? That is, you arrive at the gate of heaven at the throne of God, and they bring your record, everything read. You have been owing God every day. No debt of thanks have you ever paid. And you are going to be there with him forever. Looking at the person that you have been owing every day. That is why you discover that the atmosphere of heaven is full of thanksgiving, is full of praise, is full of appreciation. Why? We are there with the person we are owing. So we must keep celebrating him. So in order to ensure your record is clean, before you arrive in heaven, every day be thanking him. You know why? Every day is an act of God. Every day is a gift of God. Every day is a blessing from God. Every day is simply the goodness of God released in your direction. Shout hallelujah. Lift your hand to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Say it one more time, thank you, Jesus. Say it like you mean it, thank you, Jesus. Say it one more time, thank you, Jesus. Like you are really sure I will celebrate you, Jesus. We owe God thanks. We owe God what? Whether it's as an individual, as a church, we owe God thanks. Look at what God has been doing in our midst. We have never had one day where we have bad news to share. Every time you come and hear it's announcement time, have you ever had bad news before? From the day you have been here, every time we come, one good news or the other, oh, eight people are getting married. Oh, there is Christmas service. Oh, look at the goodness of God. When we conclude Shiloh, what do we hear? Good report. There is no time where we have one bad news to share. From the start of the year till now. Good news, good news, good news, good news, good news, good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's a debt that we owe to God. It is a debt that we owe. So as a church... We owe God thanks. As a church, we owe him thanks. Number two, we owe God thanks for every good thing he has done for us. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20, the Bible tells us, it said, giving thanks always unto God. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God. So anytime you look into your life, you see any good thing. It is a God thing. If it is a good thing, it is a God thing. James 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift has come from above. If it is a good thing, it is a God thing. So we give thanks to God for every good thing in our lives. And here is one of the exercises we must carry out in this concluding part of the year. Go back and begin to document God's goodness in your life. You will notice that God has been too good. Many times we are loaded with expectation but barren of appreciation. Oh, this is what I want God to do but we refuse to acknowledge what God has done. The goodness of God, the deliveries of God are greater than the expectations of man. What God has done is more than what you want him to do. 
So look back and give thanks. Look at our call to worship. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Forget not all of his benefits. Forget not all of his benefits. God has been too good. The benefits of God in the various departments of our lives if we take record of them, you and I will be overwhelmed with gratitude. This is why the songwriter said, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count them. Take record of them. Take record of them. The blessings of God in the various departments of our lives, every one of them gives you an eye depth of gratitude. So we must thank him for all of his goodness. And I tell you the truth, if you are really sincere in your life, you will discover that Psalm 23, verse 6, has been a reality. <laughs> he says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Do you know there is no day you have not enjoyed mercy? Because the Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Any day you were not consumed was a day of mercy. Hello? It was a day of mercy. Any day you were not consumed. I was meditating some, some time ago recently at the beginning of this month and I saw something in the scripture that so struck my heart. I think it was the first of this month. And that's the book of Psalm 127. And verse 2, look at what it says there. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early and sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. He said, to eat the, so there is what the Bible called the bread of sorrows. That is how people eat food. Satan planned for you to eat sorrow every day. Every single day. That was the plan of the devil. That's why Jesus said, sufficient for each day are the evils thereof. That's why Isaiah said, although the Lord give thee the bread of adversity and the cup of affliction, he said, your teachers will not be taken away to, the, to a corner. So there is what you call the bread of sorrows. Shedding tears day after day. Any day that was not consumed in tears was a day of mercy. Any day that was not consumed in sorrow was a day of mercy. So indeed, surely, goodness and mercy not only shall but has followed me from January till December. I don't know about you but I mean, if my own testimony is this. I have not sorrowed this year. Is somebody getting it? I have not sorrowed this year. And Satan wanted me to sorrow 365 days. That is sorrow without break. I think God deserves thanks. Is somebody getting it? God deserves thanks. So every day has been a day of mercy. How about goodness? Every day has been a day of goodness. Every day has been a day of goodness. The Bible tells us, it said, and they had light and joy and a good day. So any day that you rejoice is a good day. Any day you smiled, a good day. Any day you laughed, a good day. Hear this, any day of peace, a good day. Any trouble-free day, a good day. Any accident free day, a good day. Any arm robbery free day, a good day. Any kidnapping free day, a good day. How many of us have had good days all through this year? You think God deserves thanks? He deserves thanks because he has shown us his goodness. We have enjoyed his mercy. We have been partakers of his loving kindness. So we owe him thanks. 
lift your right hand to heaven and say thank you Jesus come on like you mean it thank you Jesus like you really mean it thank you Jesus like you are sure about it thank you Jesus God is good God is good no matter what seems to have happened in any way God is good most of the time we only know part of the story if you know everything God doesn't allow you to see everything because no man can handle everything no man can handle everything the goodness of God shields us covers us, defends us, protects us no one here will ever lack his goodness again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I said no one will ever lack his goodness again in the name of Jesus Christ number three we owe God timely thanks to have our blessings preserved we owe God timely thanks to have our blessings preserved so the preservation of our blessing is at the mercy of appreciation it takes thanksgiving to keep the blessings of God in your life. Please take note of this. Whatever blessing God gives will take God to keep. Whatever blessing God gives will take God to keep. So it is not enough to secure the blessing. It is vital to preserve the blessing. And the preservation of the blessing is at the mercy of appreciation. It is thanksgiving that gives us access to the preservation of God's blessing on our lives. Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 15 down to verse 17. Look at what the Bible tells us. It said, hear ye and give ear and be not proud for the Lord has spoken. What has he said? Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness, before your feet, your feet stumble on the dark mountains. And while you look for light, what happens? He turn it. So blessings are turnable. It takes the preservative of thanksgiving to secure and keep the blessings of God. That's why the Bible makes it clear that the Lord is our keeper. He does not only give, but he keeps. And to get God to keep our blessings, we must give him thanks. As we give thanks, God keeps the blessings. He preserves the blessings. So if our blessings will not get messed up, will not get rotten, will not spoil in our hands, then we must learn to be grateful to God. In the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible tells us there, it said, this commandment is for you, you priests. If you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, he said, I will send a curse upon you and curse your blessing. So blessings are turnable. And for the blessing to be preserved, we must maintain an attitude of gratitude. Whatever you are continuously thankful for, God continuously preserves. Whatever you are continuously thankful for, God continuously preserves. As you keep thanking him, God keeps preserving it. So never take any act of God for granted. You know why? What you don't thank for, God cannot keep for you. What you don't thank him for, he cannot keep for you. So whatever it is that you want God to keep for you, thank him for it. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you. What is it that you want him to keep? Start thanking for, for it. I thank you for giving me a job. I thank you for giving me a family. I thank you for giving me children. I thank you. Whatever you continuously thank God for, he continuously keeps on your behalf. My prayer this morning is that every blessing of God in your life shall be kept by the mighty hand of God. Yeah. If you believe it, say loud amen. Yeah. I said, if you believe it, say loud amen. Yeah. If you believe it, say the loudest amen. Yeah. And if God is not your defense, you lack defense. 
If God is not your defense, you lack defense. Please hear this, I hear very well. There is nothing, no strategy you can come up with that can preserve the blessings of God on your life. It will take God to do it. It will take God to do it. You think Satan was happy when God was blessing you? Hear what the Bible says concerning, <laughs> concerning Job. Job chapter 1, verse 8 and verse 9. Look at it. God said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you seen him at all? That there is none like him on the earth, a perfect man, an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. And look at what the Bible says. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for no? You are asking me, have I checked him? I have been checking him. Look at verse 10. It will now give you the detail. He said, Have you not made an hedge around him? You say, Have I considered him? I have gone there many, many times. Have you not put an hedge around him and around his house? So I didn't only try him, I tried his house. He says, and about all that he has, all those camels that they were recording that Job had, I tried them. Donkey, I tried. Sheep, I tried. Cow, I tried. I tried every area. And has blessed the work of his hand. His hand, the things that he's doing that is working, I tried to work against it. It didn't work. And his substance has increased. I tried to turn increase to decrease. It didn't work. You think when God was blessing you, Satan was happy? He has been trying to work against it. Every blessing, your family he tried to work against. Your job he tried to work against. Your safety he tried to work against. Your children he tried to work against. Your spouse he tried to work against. Everything, your health he tried to work against. Every department he tried and tried. Now that is the blessing of God to keep it, to keep it. To keep it, you need thanksgiving. If God takes his hand off, you are defenseless. A man that does not have God as defense lacks defense. He lacks defense. So let us never come to the point of thinking, oh, uh, these things, I, 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 I'm going to do A and do B and preserve these blessings. No man has capacity. Satan will try every area. You hear me? Did you see what Satan said there? He said, have you, have you not? How did he know? He has gone to check. Let me hit the man. Bah! God was defending him. Let me enter his house. God was defending it. Let me try and hit his substance. God was defending it. Let me see how I can turn his profit to losses. God was defending it. Let me see how I can touch his body. God was defending it. If a man lacks God as defense, he lacks defense. This is why we must keep giving thanks to God so that God remains our defense. And when a man has God as defense, no one can assault him. It's untouchable. It's untouchable. So whatever will take the defense of God away from you, you must run away from it. Is somebody getting it now? Whatever will take the defense of God away from you, you must run away from it. So anytime Satan wants to make you more, more you know what he's trying to make you do? Take away the defense of God. Now, listen. Go and read the book of Job. From the second chapter of Job. All the way till God began to appear to Job in, verse, in chapter 39 or 40. He complained, complained, complained. Satan tormented, tormented. He showed him pepper. Hello? The more he complained, the more Satan buffeted him. There are whole chapters of Job that are the complaint of Job. Complete chapter, one to last. Where he just complain, 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 complain. From one area to the other. Until God arose and rebuked him. And he said, now I've heard of thee with the hearing of the ear. But now my eye, my eyes has opened. I now know that inside of all of this thing, you are still too good. And then God turned the captivity of Job. So to keep the blessing, you must keep the blesser. And to keep the blesser, you must keep giving thanks. 
Is somebody getting it this morning? Lift your hand to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, thanksgiving is not a light matter. No, it's a major matter for kingdom living. It's a major matter. There is no blessing in your life that Satan is not envious of. And to keep that blessing, you must keep giving him thanks. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Like you mean to say, thank you, Jesus. Number four, thanksgiving provokes supernatural multiplication. It provokes supernatural multiplication. Supernatural multiplication. That is the effect of thanksgiving. It provokes supernatural multiplication. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11, we are told there very clearly, it said the Lord, your God, make you a thousand times. So many more than you are. Make you a thousand times. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. Out of them will proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply. So as we are thanking God multiplies. This is both individual and corporate. It brings about multiplication. 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 That is one of the multiplying factors in the life of a person. I can't forget during the first Wonder Double season 2015, I picked something from here. And I, I, I noted that one of the secrets that will provoke multiplication in the church was thanksgiving and praise. So as soon as we finish service, we used to have three services in our church out there in, um, in, in the UK. As soon as we finish service and we share the goodness and give our covenant exchange, the choir gets understand. Everybody starts going, we start dancing. Heavyweight dance. We dance, 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 jump, jubilate. From one, why? For what God did that day. We dance and dance that time, minimum 30 minutes, just celebrating before God. Dancing, jubilating. I remember sometime I had gone out to go and win souls and I brought a convert to church. And after I danced, I met the convert in the street the following week. He said, Pastor, I have never seen somebody dancing like that. Too. He said, I was surprised. This Sunday I'm coming again. Dance that. And as we're dancing, church was jumping. People were flowing from everywhere. We'll come for first time as you will see people everywhere, over flooding everywhere. We look at a particular place and say, this place will be filled next week. By the time we dance, 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 next week, that place is full. This area will be full next week. We dance, just breaking forth on every side. Why? As you are thanking, is multiplying. Hello? Don't look at that business and say, what is this? So you mean all from January to now, all somebody can make in this, in this business that I'm running, or everything from January to now, January to now, everything can, that somebody can make is 100,000. That's less than 10,000 10, per month. Uh -uh. What is this? When you say, what is this? God will reduce it. It becomes 90,000. You say, ah, how now? Things are going up, money is going down. Eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, I heard Bishop Babi say something some years ago, and they stuck with me. He said, the children of Israel, God gave them manna. And when the manna came, it, God called it bread. Children of Israel are the one who called it manna. Manna means, what is this? God said, that is it. For 40 years, you will eat the same thing. He gave them manna, manna, manna. What is this? What is this? What is this? For 40 solid years, they didn't change diet. Is somebody getting... The Bible did not say that was the only thing God wanted to give them. But since they called it, what is this? God said, that is it. So never look at the blessing of God and say, what is this? Or else, that will be it. But when you say all this, God says, have this. 
For somebody from today, that will become your own experience. As you look around your life and say, all this, God will say, have this. You say, all this, he will say, have this. All this, he will say, have this. This year, before the year concludes, God will say to somebody, have this. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. He will say to somebody hearing my voice this morning, have this. If you believe you are the one, say the loudest, amen. So it provokes multiplication. Number, four, number five, God is the source of every breakthrough that we experience. So as we are thanking him, what are we doing? We are acknowledging him as the source of the breakthroughs. And what happens when you acknowledge the source of breakthrough? You break through more. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, single barren thou that is not bring forth, break forth into singing. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the married wife. He said, because you are now singing, stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Why? You will break forth on the left and on the right. So as you are celebrating God, there is a breaking forth. Somebody is experiencing a breaking forth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, thanksgiving secures fulfillment of prophecy. So whatever is the balance of the prophecy of the year, you secure its manifestation by thanksgiving. You secure its manifestation by thanksgiving. This is so important. So as we are thanking God, we are securing the manifestation of the fulfillment of God's blessing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. He says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. And when we have done the will of God, we obtain the promise. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Whatever God has spoken concerning the year is delivered as we begin to celebrate him for it. So we can press our way into our prophetic deliverables via thanksgiving. I see grace coming upon us for this in Jesus' name. It's important to note as we conclude this morning that lack of thanksgiving destroys just, like pride, just as pride does. Lack of thanksgiving. He says because Psalm chapter 28 and verse 5 he said because they regarded not the Lord or the works of his hands, he said he will destroy them and not build them up. You see anytime you don't give thanks, you withhold thanks from God, destruction comes. That's what happened to Herod. Herod spoke and they said, this is the voice of God and not of a man. The Bible did not say that Herod said, this is true. I'm God speaking. No. It just said Herod did not give God the glory. And because of that, worms ate him up. He lost out. Destruction came because he gave not God the glory. Please hear this. Refusing to give God thanks is highly destructive. It has the capacity to destroy a man's life and destiny. That is why you must keep giving him thanks. And here it is, there is no overdose of thanksgiving. You can't praise God to a point that God says, okay, it's too much. Like we have heard, you can pray amiss. You can't praise amiss. You can pray amiss. You can't thank amiss. As long as you are thanking God, God keeps decorating you. Lift your hand to heaven. And give glory to God this morning. Come on, give him glory. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Before we go any further this morning, you are here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You have not made him the Lord and Savior of your life. That's the starting point. It's not enough to have songs in your mouth. It is vital to have the songs you are singing on the earth being recorded in heaven. And what determines whether your voice on earth sounds in heaven is whether you have a relationship with God. Until you are born again, your praise on the earth cannot register with God. Wherever you are this morning, you say, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to become a child of God. I want to be connected to God in truth and in deed. I can't afford to let this moment pass me by. Wherever you are, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. God bless you. All over this place.
all over this place. I must get it right with Jesus. I must make it right with God all over this place. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Secondly, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong along the way. You had a relationship with God. You were walking with God. You were serving God. But somehow, maybe the cares of life, maybe the concerns of life, maybe difficult situations around your life brought you a sense of disconnection. Nobody may even know it. But inside you, you know, I'm not right with God. Things are not the way they used to be. My heart has gone cold. I still have activity, but no more connectivity. I don't want to just have people call me a Christian. I want God to call me his child. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Quickly stand on your feet also. I want to pray with you. God bless 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 you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Now, please quickly suspend filling your form for a moment. Lift up your right hand before the Lord and just pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Make it loud and clear. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself, but I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you no turning back. I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious people who have come to you confessing Jesus as Lord. Now give them grace to keep serving you all the days of their lives and never turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Please complete your form. Submit it to the official closest to you. Right after you do that, they will give you a little card. They say, we love you card. Right after the service, you will take that card to any of our new convert tents. Those tents are outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the, tent in that, the card in that tent and they will give you a gift from the church to help build your faith. So please take advantage of it and you'll be blessed as you do so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, congratulations. Please, hallelujah. We want to admonish you also to take advantage of the Believers Foundation class that is available. You'll be contacted via SMS to be told the location closest to where you live and you'll be told when the classes will be taking place. It holds on Mondays usually and it takes place at 6 p.m. You'll be told the closest location. If you can't make it to the physical class, you can attend the class online. The address is on the screen, bfc.lfcww.org. Take advantage of it and be blessed as you do in Jesus' precious name. One more time, congratulations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is somebody ready to praise God this morning? Or you want to just go like that? You don't think we should praise God? You want to dance before God? You want to give God the glory? In a moment, the choir is going to be leading us. And now with understanding, we are going to give him thanks. We are going to give him praise. This is an Hosanna service. As we are raising him in Hosanna, is changing our stories supernaturally. Are you ready to give thanks to God this morning? Stand on your feet. Lift your hand, first of all, and do it in words. Do it in words. Whatever you can recall, begin to offer him thanks for it. Do it first in words. Do it first in words. Father, I thank you for health and vitality. I thank you for strength. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for illumination. I thank you for the fortitude of faith. I thank you for the deliveries in my life. Oh, your goodness on every side. Your mercy every day. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the adoration. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of adoration. Thank you. And thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. You believe, say loud, amen. It is done.
Let's celebrate him right now. I will rejoice and be glad in you. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day he has made. I will rejoice. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day. Everybody rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. Celebrate. I will rejoice and be glad. Somebody do me this. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day. This is the day. Say, I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. We rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice.
of God come down upon your life. You have said to God this morning all this. Therefore he's saying to you have this. Whatever is lacking in your life because you have celebrated him this morning it is delivered into your hands. This year will still end with surprises for you. I said this year will still end with surprises for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of things you cannot imagine happen will still happen for you this year. Blessings you have not prepared for will still locate you this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be for you. In Jesus Christ precious name we have prayed. So what is our duty? Keep thanking God. Keep celebrating God. Keep rejoicing before him. Keep honoring him. Keep adoring him. Keep giving him the praise. And watch it. He will decorate you unusually. Whatever you are thanking God for, he will multiply it. Whatever you are thanking God for, he will preserve it. The will of the enemy will never prevail over you. No evil is permitted to befall any one of us. But those who may have traveled to one location or the other, the hand of God preserves each one. Our going out is blessed. And our coming in is blessed. In Jesus' precious name. You believe you say loud amen. I say you believe you say loud amen. So like was said, begin to document the various areas of God's goodness. 2023, look back and start documenting the faithfulness of God in the various departments of your life. As you start celebrating God for those things, he will deliver into your hands unusual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember tomorrow is Christmas Day. Hallelujah. The greatest gift God ever gave was Christ. And what a joy that you and I have him. So we are gathering tomorrow, two services, like was mentioned, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock. We are gathering to honor and celebrate God for that wonderful gift. And as we do that, I see him decorating each one of us. Everything is inside that gift. Everything. In him, all the fullness dwells. Everything. That's why we're celebrating God. Where will you and I be without Jesus? <laughs> There's no need imagining it. The imagination is not good. That's why we are coming to give him thanks. We are coming to celebrate. No greater gift has ever been given than the gift of Christ. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Louder, thank you, Jesus. So we are gathered together tomorrow, coming to celebrate God. And after that, we return home to celebrate together with our various families and just keep giving God the glory for all that he has done. Next Sunday is our end of year Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a very unusual month of December. We entered it with Thanksgiving, preparing for Shiloh. We concluded Shiloh with Thanksgiving. We continue Thanksgiving. We're ending the year with Thanksgiving. 
2024 will be a year of dangerous blessings. So come ready next week Sunday and then we have our crossover night. Hallelujah. Next Sunday also two services, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock and then the crossover night 10 p.m. next week also as we fly into the year 2024. I want you to be ready. It will be an unusual year. The way this year is ending, imagine what is waiting. 2024, a year of unusual blessings. So get ready, get set. God is set for you. God is ready for you. None of us will miss our portion. Lift your hand to heaven one more time and glorify God. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of all praise and all glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Let's share the goodness together. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do so. If you came after the worship offering, officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed. All our new converts, don't forget to stop by the new convert tents. Take the We Love You card you have been given and drop it at the tent to pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. If you have a testimony to share in the second service, quickly rush to any of the major entrances. Our pastors are waiting there to document your testimonies. God bless you. Second service starts at 8 o'clock prompt, 8 a.m. prompt. Choir, get ready. 8 o'clock prompt, we are starting the service. Congratulations. Somebody keep rejoicing, keep celebrating God as you go.
Hallelujah. Please shall we all rise and we receive the choir as we commence the second service. Put your blessings together for Jesus. The choir, please. to be praised Almighty God You are worthy to be praised You are the King of Kings You are worthy to be praised You are worthy to be praised You are worthy, you are worthy Almighty God Almighty God You are worthy to be praised You are worthy, you are worthy King of Kings Above 
It's a Hosanna service this Sunday morning. Let somebody shout the loudest, Hosanna. Hosanna. Put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. I'm sure you can make it bigger. You can make it louder. You can make it bigger before you take your seat. Louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. Shout another Hosanna. Please, you may be seated. Praise God. This second service, our call to worship, is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 103. And we are reading verses 1 to 8 responsibly. Psalms, chapter 103, verses 1 to 8. I take verse 1 together, verse 2, and all the way like that to verse 8. Praise God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Two, church. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Four. Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things? So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Six. The Lord has executed righteousness and judgment. For all that are praise. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Together and the loudest, verse 8, one to go. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Shout another Hosanna. Hosanna. You are welcome to church. Put your hands together for the Lord. Again, shout the biggest Hosanna. Please listen to the following faith tabernacle announcement for this special Hosanna service. Number one, good news. Tomorrow, Monday, 25th December 2023, is Christmas service. We shall be gathered as a congregation to celebrate the greatest gift of all, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We shall be holding only two services, time 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. Number two, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty heart of God at testimonies at davidoedeko.com and testimonies at lfcww.org. Number three, praise the Lord. Be reminded that all Shiloh 2023 teachings, messages from previous Shiloh events and other spiritual resources are available for our edification at any of our dominion book stands. Number four, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues Tuesday to Saturday, time 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Our midweek communal service holds this Wednesday in all our zonal centers across Lagos and Otta. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communal time, 6 p.m. Number six, good news. Eight intending couples were this weekend. Hallelujah. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers. And share in their joy. Time, 11 a.m. Number seven. Winner Satellite Fellowship. In view of the mass travels during this festive season, our Winner Satellite Fellowship weekly program is on hold until January 2024. Number eight. Good news. 2023-2024 crossover service. It holds on Sunday, 31st December 2023. It shall be our prophetic entrance into 2024. Time, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Nigerian time. Number nine, good news. 2024, 21 days of prayer and fasting 
holds between January 8th to 28th of January 2024. Celebrate Jesus. Prepare to partake of this spiritual expedition as it shall be a time of unusual encounters from the Lord. And finally, number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our special end of the year Thanksgiving service. Hallelujah. We shall be returning with a heart of gratitude for the multitude of blessings released and received from the Lord all through the year 2023. Why is he crying the year 2024 with our thanksgiving and praise? It shall be a service to be much remembered. Remember to come along with your family members and other loved ones. Be sure not to miss this. We shall be holding only two services and the time is 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Again, put those hands together for the Lord. In this service this morning, it is testimony time. Say it louder and confidently, my breakthrough time. Please let's listen to the following documented testimonies and you are returning from this Hosanna service with your own Hosanna testimony. Number one, financial breakthrough via Shiloh sacrifice. Make that club better and bigger for the King of Kings. I want to give the glory to the God of Bishop David Oedeko for his favor upon my life. I've been coming for Shiloh since 2019. Every year during Shiloh sacrifice, I will make a pledge but never fulfill it. At Shiloh, I felt the urge to empty my account and I obeyed and gave it as my Shiloh sacrifice. Bishop said, Whatever we've given to God on the altar of sacrifice must answer back to us. And whatever we've given in tears shall return to us with laughter. I keyed into it. And then God showed up. I emerged as the best staff of the year in my organization with the prize in millions. My first million ever is someone celebrating Jesus. This is the first in my department since the inception of the company. God is truly wonderful and keeps his word. I am highly favored. The testifier, Mrs. Ogunleye O. One more time, let's give the Lord a baby clap of praise. Number two. Miracle Conception via Encounter at Shiloh. I bless the God of Shiloh who terminated two years of infertility in my life. I was in the Mothers and Fathers of Nation class at Shiloh 2022 and I told God I want to return to Shiloh 2023 with my miracle baby. But nothing happened till September 24th when Operation 11th Hour Change of Story was announced. The Holy Spirit instructed me to fast all through the operation, which I did. Afterwards, he instructed that I embarked on praise warfare for the remaining days of the month of November. I prayed that I want to arrive Shiloh 2023. I prayed that I don't want to arrive Shiloh 2023 with an empty womb. While in the Mothers and Fathers of Nation class, I had two sisters testified of testing positive to pregnancy a week after Shiloh. I keyed into their testimony and I declared that I will also, that will also be my testimony. Exactly a week after Shiloh 2023, I decided to take a home pregnancy test. Lo and behold, it was positive. <laughs> Blessed be the God of Shiloh who has wiped away my tears. The testifier is Binke Otitoju. 
In this service, God will also wipe your tears. Give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. One more time for those amazing wonders of God. Shall we give Jesus a big hand of praise? Right now, today, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winners who are welcome. Today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle. Please rise to your faith, remain standing for the winners welcome. Winners around, give Jesus yet a bigger clap offering for all of these precious people. The welcome package along with a card will be given you to fill in the cause of this welcome. Once you have received it, take your seat and begin filling it. Please ensure you receive your copy before you take your seat and begin filling it. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, Universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by divine mandate, where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the story of men and women, old and young boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of the world as taught upon this mountain. For over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to obey them. Amen. I want to welcome you today to this home of signs and wonders and may today encounter usher you into the realms of ear tingly testimonies that you have long waited for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, to all our first time worshippers, we say, welcome home. Church, clap some more for Jesus for them. Please, may I request that all our first time worshippers rise one more time to your faith for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise again to your faith and bow down your heads as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all of these precious ones that you have brought into your presence today. You brought them to bless them, and therefore, by your authority, we declare they are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, today, in this Hosanna service, we ask that whatever concern came with them, or they left at home, Lord, send them to open testimonies for them at their return in the name of Jesus Christ. And should there be any of them who is here to meet with you, Lord Jesus, we pray for them today that this day shall be their day of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ. At the end, every one of them returns with a testimony to remember for this day. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please take your seat. And one more time, please complete the filling of your forms and hand them over to the officials closest to where you are. You are once again welcome and God bless you. Church, please clap for Jesus. For that. Hallelujah. In this service, it is offering time. Please make it louder. My blessing time. If you have not already done so, please now begin to put together all that you have brought to worship Jesus Christ in this Hosanna service. These include your tithe, which is 10% increase of God upon your life, your worship seed, and any other seed you have come to honor Jesus Christ within this service. Please be reminded that you can give using cash offerings, 
which will be neatly packaged in an envelope and well labeled. If you are paying through checks, make it payable to Faith Tabernacle Kina Land, or you give through any of our electronic giving channels as shown on the screen. Zechariah chapter 8 at verse 12. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. The heavens shall give their due. Every of this return channel of harvest will answer for you. Please rise with me this hour. Let's lift up our seat together to heaven. And speak a word to God on your seat in your hand. I appreciate God for the privilege to have the seed. Father, we thank you that we have not appeared before you empty. To you be the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name. Please keep your seat lifted. Our Father, this morning we are grateful to you for the seed in our hand. Please accept it as you accept us. Let this seed be the least we ever have to offer. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. For every title today, let the heavens remain open. For every giver today sowing seed, oh God, we ask that their harvest will answer abundantly. By all means, bless everyone sowing today. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' holy name, we have given thanks. Please be seated. Cast your seed as we receive the faith of an uncle choir for ministration. Oh, 
someone join me lift up your hands this morning and let's give quality thanks to God again this morning appreciate him magnify his name let's together extol him someone grateful to be alive and well this morning Today is another Easter, sorry, Christmas Eve for 2023. Lift up your voice. Uh, give quality thanks to God. Uh, appreciate him. Magnify his name. Uh, celebrate him for the gift of life, uh, for his preservation. Thank you for his sustenance. Uh, thank him for watching over you. Lift up your voice. Someone is grateful, then you are thanking. You are grateful, then you are celebrating him. Father, we just give you thanks. Uh, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. No one like you. No one like you. No one compares to our God. He has watched us since the year began. He has preserved our coming out and our going in. He has sustained us all through the year. Lift up your voice. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Father, we are grateful. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Well, the most grateful person in church this morning is shouting the loudest, Amen. Father, again, we say thank you for all of the blessings we have received since the year began. What a joy you have preserved us. What a joy you have protected us. What a joy you have sustained us. From the beginning of the year down to this very point in time, we give you all of the glory. Lord, right now, speak to us again. Send us your word with power. Let no one return from this service the same way we came. And take all of the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Well, your amen can be louder again this morning. Give Jesus the biggest clap this morning. Uh, and please be comfortably seated. Amen. I count it a great privilege of God and of my Father to bring a word in this second service on this Christmas Eve day. To God alone be all the glory. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. And that's what we'll be looking at quickly for the next few minutes. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. Simply put, loaded inside thanksgiving are spiritual wonders. Wonders. Embedded inside thanksgiving are spiritual wonders. But the level of understanding we possess defines the quality of results we command. The level of understanding that you and I possess ultimately defines the quality of results that we command. In other words, our profiting in stewardship is tied to the level of our understanding. So for every spiritual engagement, it is required that we engage with understanding. In fact, scripture makes it clear that it's not enough to praise. We must also praise him with what? Understanding. Psalms 47 verse 7. Praise him with understanding. He said, for God is the king of all the earth. When you sing praises, how do you do it? Sing praises with understanding. Never forget that thanksgiving is a mystery of this kingdom. It's a mystery of the kingdom. Many can't understand why we jump and why we dance and why we keep celebrating God over and over again. It is a mystery. The carnal mind cannot understand it. The natural mind cannot comprehend it. But to the spiritual, it is a potent mystery. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 and verse 11. The scripture declares, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But watch this. But to them that are outside 
all these things they are done in parables they don't make sense people are confused that how can I be in a situation where I don't know what to do and I begin to dance and to praise how can I be confronted by adversaries everywhere I look to my front I look to my side I look behind me adversaries everywhere and I begin to dance how can my health be challenged how can my body be broken and I look up to God and I begin to dance how can I be locked up in prison chained up by life situation and circumstances and I turn to praise praise is a mystery of the kingdom it is so simple yet so powerful it is so simple yet so life transforming and that is why too many people don't engage this mystery because of its simplicity too simple yet so powerful so simple yet so life transforming now here what paul the apostle said in second corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 now Paul was speaking there and he said, but I fear, I fear, lest by any means, watch this, as the serpent beguiled Eve. The word beguiled means to deceive, to contaminate. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Oftentimes, the commandment of scriptures are so simple, yet they are so powerful. Paul and Silas locked up in the prison. No natural way of escape. Acts chapter 16. Now Paul began to pray. pray. He had prayed and Silas at midnight, they prayed. But it seemed like nothing changed. They lifted up their voices. Intense prayer, supplication, intercession. Ooh, and it looked like nothing changed. And then Paul remembered that there's a key that unlocks God's divine intervention and that's the key of praise. And they switched to praise. And they sang praises unto God. And watch this. And the prisoners had them. So it was not silent praise. It was not psychedelic praise. It's not packaged praise. It is radical praise. And they began to sing. And the prisoners had this. And watch this. At the instance of their praise, verse 26, everything began to shake. Because as they were singing, God stood up from his throne. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. God had arrived on the scene. Please hear this praise is an invitation God cannot resist. It's an invitation God cannot resist. When you pray, God may send angels. But when you praise, God steps in by himself. He steps in. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison began to shake. Tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. God can't step in and the earth won't quake. God can't step in and the earth won't shake. And the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. Not one door escaped. All the doors. As you begin to praise God all through the season, every door that has been closed will open up supernaturally. All the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. I perceive in my spirit that not just Paul and Silas, everyone in the prison, all the chains fell off. Because of you, your own household will be saved. Because of your praise, your family will be rescued. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. Our Father began to unveil in this season the wonders and the mystery in praise. And he made a profound statement. And this statement has stuck to my spirit so strong. He said, God answers thanksgiving faster than it does intercessions and supplications. And when he said this statement... I said, is it not wisdom to turn every of your intercession and supplication into thanksgiving? Because what you are doing in thanksgiving, you are committing the integrity of God. And you are saying, for instance, Father, I thank you because 2023 will end well for me. He has no choice but to make it end well for you. 
Are you hearing what the word is saying? My father, I thank you because I'm crossing into 2024 already pregnant. And it begins to move all forces in heaven to ensure that this word you have thanked him for is a done deal. Think about this in the natural. Your son begins to thank you. Every morning he said, Daddy, thank you for that bicycle. You have not bought the bicycle yet. He said, Daddy, I thank you for the bicycle. He said, I have not bought it. He said, I know, but I'm thanking you. Are you hearing what this, the word is saying? That, then tomorrow, he wakes up again. First in the morning, he comes to your room and knocks the door. And you say, yes, son, what is it? He said, Daddy, thank you for the bicycle. You look at your wife. I've not bought this bicycle yet. What is this boy's challenge? He said, Daddy, I thank you. And he's dancing back to his room. The third day, he comes again. Daddy, I thank you. What again? He said, for the bicycle. You tell your wife, I better go buy this bicycle. I better go buy this bicycle. I better go buy this bicycle. So as we keep thanking him, we commit him. He has no choice. His integrity is on the line. Psalm 92, from verse 1 and 2. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. So every time we are thanking God, we are doing that which is good. And how? To sing praises to his name. For he's the most high. Verse 2. To show forth his loving kindness in the morning. And his faithfulness every what? night. Jump to verse 10. Now see the effect. See the effect. You thanked him in verse 1 and verse 2. See the effect in verse 10. But my horn, my horn, personal, because I thanked him. But my horn shall down exalt like the horn of a unicorn. Watch this. I shall be anointed with what? Fresh oil. And it won't stop there. Verse 11. My eyes shall begin to see my desires. Somebody shouting amen right now. Because I thanked him, my eyes now begin to see my desires upon my enemies. So everyone that said I will not end 2023, God begins to make sure that I end it in a grand style. And everyone that is digging any pit, God ensures that they fall inside the pit. And my ears. So as my eyes are seeing it, my ears will be hearing it. So I hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Watch this. That's your boss in your place of work that's been tormenting you. You will hear that that boss has been removed. My ears shall hear. My ears shall hear. Now watch this. And the righteous shall begin to flourish. Come on now. Shall begin to flourish. How? Like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Somebody saying amen to that. He said, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, what will happen to them? They will flourish. Beginning from now, all through 2024, everyone in this family will, will flourish. Remember, prophetically, we are to flourish in hard times. So while the world is going through tough times, we will just be flourishing. Watch this. They'll be selling businesses. We'll be buying them over. Are you hearing what the word is saying? They'll be selling their houses. We'll be buying them over. They'll be selling their vehicles. We'll be buying them over. If you are saying amen, say it like a true believer. But the eyes of our understanding must be enlightened to understand the potency of thanksgiving. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Ephesians 1 and verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I've discovered that the reason why many can't give thanks is because they can't see what God has done. They have been blinded. They can't see what God has done. Their eyes are blinded. They are described in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Whom the gods of this world have blinded the minds of them. So he puts a barrier. They can't see what God has done. They have open eyes but blinded sight. They can't see. Their eyes are looking but the devil has placed a veil. And all he's showing them is what has not worked. 
Meanwhile, they have a catalog of things that God has done. For instance, someone is saying, today is December 24th. I believe that at the beginning of the year, by this time, I should not be at this level. By this time, I thought I would have been gloriously married. By this time, I thought I would have been promoted in my place of work. By this time, I thought I would have gotten admission. And the devil is placing all kinds of I thought, I thought, I thought. Blinding our eyes from seeing all of the things that God has done. And God is saying, it's only the living that can complain. Have you ever seen a dead man complain? So every time we display ingratitude, every time we murmur, every time we complain, I can just imagine God looking around on us and saying, it is because of the breath I gave you. So we use the breath that God has given to complain on God. And he's saying, if I had not preserved you from January to February to March to April to May to June to July to August to September, to October, to November, and up to now in December. Will you have the guts to complain? Oh Lord, I thought I would have been married. No man marries a dead woman. No matter how he loves her. It is of the lost mercies you and I are not consumed. He says, I lay me down. I slept. I awoke. Not because I know how to sleep and how to wake up. But because the Lord sustained me. You have been sleeping since January 1st. You sleep anyhow. You throw one leg this way. You throw the other leg this way. Come on now. You change gear in snoring. And you say God has not done anything. Have you discovered that when you are sleeping, you are not conscious of what is happening around you? There are some people you sleep in Canaan and they can carry you to a jar. And you don't even know. You are, they have transported you without you knowing. You are changing gear. Mm, mm, changing gear. Sleeping. So while you were sleeping, night after night, God was awake watching over you. When the devil came to assault you, he cleared off that devil. He cleared out that demon. And we are asking, what has God done? But quickly, why do we give thanks? Why do we give thanks? If thanksgiving is commanded, if thanksgiving is demanded, why must we give thanks? Number one, we owe God thanks both as individuals and as a church. We owe him. Thanksgiving is a debt that we owe God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says we are bound. We are bound. There's no option. Thanksgiving for the believer is not optional. It is mandatory. That's why the scripture says we are bound to give thanks. Always. Always. Every living man is indebted to God. Every living man. As long as the man is living, he's indebted. And this debt is continuous. As long as God is working, man is owing. As long as God is working, man is owing. This debt that you and I owe God, it is continuous. It is continuous. Now hear what the psalmist says in Psalm 150 verse 6. He said, let everything... Everything that has what? Come on, help me. That has what? Do what? Praise. Not complain. Not murmur. Not analyze the situation. Praise the Lord. So every day you wake up and there's breath in your nostril, you are indebted to God. Are you hearing what the word is saying? And every day you have been waking up, waking up, waking up. So it's compound interest debt. You are indebted to God compoundly. So every act of God leaves man with a debt to God. And the psalmist understood this. That's why he said in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. In the morning time, thank you Jesus. In the afternoon time, thank you Jesus. In the evening time, 
Thank you, Jesus. You wake up in the dead of the night. Thank you, Jesus. You wake up to go and use the restroom. Thank you. Have you ever wondered? We take too many acts of God for granted. Do you think there's everyone that can go to the toilet freely? No. Not everyone. Not everyone can lift up their hands freely. Some of their hands have been suspended by POP. Lift up your hands where you are. Can, can I see you wave those hands to Jesus? Are your hands working well? Come on, if they are working well, you'll be waving them well this morning. With gratitude to God. Come on now, with gratitude to God. Now if you can, shout another amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. Please never forget one thing about this God. He keeps adequate records of all his acts. Adequate records of all of his acts in the life of his children. Luke chapter 17 from verse 15 down to 19. Ten lepers came to Jesus. It, it healed them and they left. And in verse 15, and one of them, one out of ten, when he saw that he was healed, what happened? He turned back. And how? With a loud voice. Glorified God. And he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus. Giving him what? Thanks. Verse 17. Now watch what Jesus said. And Jesus answered. Where there not ten cleansed? I remember, 10 of them came. I healed 10 people. But where are the nine? God keeps adequate records of all his acts in our lives. Even the ones we forget, God does not forget. So is it not safe to thank him for everything and at all times? That's what the psalmist was simply saying, in case I forgot some. I will bless the Lord at all times. And you know the end of that story. The one that returned with a loud voice. The only one that saw what God had done. He was perfected. Somebody here, your blessings will be perfected. So we all got thanks as individuals. And we all got thanks as a commission. As a church. Now think about this. As a church, we have enjoyed the goodness of God. We have enjoyed 42 years and counting, never a downward trend. You have never come to church any Sunday and you see heaviness in the faces of people. Every Sunday, people are jumping. They're excited. Someone walked into this church and he said, this is a jumping church. A jumping church. I said, you are not wrong. We are a jumping church. That's why things are jumping for us. Come on now. As we are jumping, things are jumping. We are scaling heights. Do you know why we sweat in praise? We sweat in praise so we won't sweat in life. So every time we come celebrating God and we are sweating, praising and dancing, jumping and leaping, God is ensuring that we don't sweat with life. Watch this. We will never sweat over any concern of life again. We have enjoyed growth as a commission. We have enjoyed peace. We have enjoyed stability. We have enjoyed increased expansion. What have we not enjoyed? As a commission, everything we touch turns to gold. We owe God thanks. Can you join me one more time? Shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the loudest you can right now. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, why do we give thanks? We owe God thanks for every good thing he has done for us. We owe God thanks for every good thing he has done. Every. Every good thing. Never mistake the good things or the good happenings in your life as the making of your hand. Never mistake. John 15 verse 5. It says, without me, ye can do nothing. 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 Absolutely nothing. He can do nothing. 
So if it is good, then it is God. James chapter 1 and verse 17. Every good and perfect. So every good thing you can trace in your life, it is simply the good hand of God at work. You are still in the right frame of mind. You are not on the street roaming like a mad or an insane person. You are not in a hospital. Some of us, since January to date, our back has not touched the hospital bed. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us seated here, no knife has, no, no, no medical apparatus has touched our body since the year began. Even some of us here have not touched one medication on our lips since the year began. And you say God has not done anything. You apply the same road, others apply and they never return. And you say God has not done anything. Your children go to school and they return in safety. And you say God has not done anything. You sleep and you wake up. No arm robber comes to your house. You travel. You are not kidnapped. And you say God has not done anything. Hmm. Just take a look at yourself. From your head to your toe. Since January to December, nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing fractured. Everything intact. Come on, shout another thank you, Jesus. So what is demanded of us? We must keep counting and recounting our blessings. We can never overdo thanksgiving. We must keep counting and recounting all of the good things that God has done. Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all. How many? Now, if you read that scripture, it says all that is within me. Within. Within. Everything inside you should join to celebrate God. That means your intestines should join to celebrate God. Your liver should join to celebrate God. Your heart should join to celebrate God. Your kidneys should join to celebrate God. So every time we are jumping and leaping in praise, everything outside and inside is praising God. That's why your liver will not fail. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why your kidney is not permitted to fail. That's why you are not permitted to have heart attack. You cannot praise God with everything inside you and it will fail. And all that is within me, do what? Bless his holy name. Verse 2. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not. Hmm. Forget not. Forget not. You know why he's saying forget not? Man in his natural estate has tendency to forget. Man in his natural estate has the tendency, the likelihood to forget. He says, forget not all of his benefits. How many of us have received the benefits from heaven this year at all? Come on, have you received any kind of benefit? Come on, heaven is watching those hands. Have you received any form of benefit? So we owe God thanks. We owe him thanks. Verse 3, quickly. Now watch this. It begins to describe the benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all? Did you see all? 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 All your iniquities? All your diseases? Verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Left for the devil, none of us will be here today. But shame on that devil, we are here. And we are not just here, we are here in our multiplied states. And we are not ending this year, we are crossing into the next year. So he redeems our life from destruction. And watch this. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5. Quickly. He satisfies our mouth with what? Good things. God will yet satisfy your mouth here. Somebody shouting amen, shouting like a true believer. Every time I think of David, I began to wonder what made David the most outstanding king in Israel. He, understand, he understood, rather, this mystery of thanksgiving. He said, seven times a day will I praise. I will pray three times, but I will dance seven times. 
Because I understand the mystery in thanksgiving. And this David would dance in the midst of all of his servants. A time came in 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 20 to 22. 2 Samuel 6 and verse 20 to 22. Here King David, he had danced. He had danced and celebrated God so much. And his wife now began to say to him, Oh, how shameless. Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. Look at you, king. You uncovered yourself today in the eyes of your servants. As one of those vain fellows, the word vain means useless people, shamelessly uncovered himself. But I like the way David answered her. And David said to her, Micah, it was before who? The Lord. So when you are praising God, you are not praising for man to see. That's why in this commission, when you come and you see us dancing, it has been right from the beginning. We dance with reckless abandon. No decorum. No packaging. We dance anyhow. And that's why God is blessing us anyhow. Now watch what he said to her. It was before the Lord. Who chose me before your father? Your father was too proud to dance. That's why God kicked him out and put me there. And he said, just in case you think uh, I'm shameless, you have not seen anything yet. <laughs> he said, therefore will I play before the Lord. So when we are praising and dancing, we are playing before God. Have you seen children when they play before their parents? No shame. They jump, they lift one leg, they jump, they, lift, they roll on the floor. And the father is smiling, yes, what do you need, my son? That's how we play before the Lord. So in praise, we are playing before him. And as we are playing before him, before, before him, it's satisfying our mouths with good things. That will be somebody's testimony here. Yeah. Caution. Never feel too big to play before God. Never feel too big to dance before God. He's the reason behind our existence. Some days ago, a medical doctor was testifying. And he, he was sharing a story and he said some years ago there was an accident and they brought in all of the, the victims of the accident. Some had died. Others were injured. And they were running helter skelter trying to salvage those that were injured. Now in his own testimony he said all of a sudden as they were trying to treat all the ones that were still alive they began to hear an alarm clock. And they went to check. Lo and behold the alarm was in the pocket of one of them that had died. And then he discovered and reflected that the alarm clock that used to wake him before now could not wake him now. And I remember the statement the resident pastor often shares that if you think that you wake up because of your alarm clock, take the alarm clock to the mortuary. Put it there. Let it sound. Let it resound. And see how many will wake up. I lay me down. I slept. I awoke because the Lord sustained me. So never feel too big to play before the Lord. Quickly, number three. Why do we give thanks? We owe God timely thanks to have our blessings preserved. We owe God timely thanks to have our blessings preserved. So every time you receive fresh blessings... And you want that blessing preserved, add the preservative of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a spiritual preservative. It elongates the lifespan of the blessing. Think of this in the nature. Many of us are acquainted with tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes. Looking so yummy. You put it on this side. And you take the tin tomatoes or the cane tomatoes and you put it on the other side. They don't have equal lifespan, yet the same product. The fresh one at most can last between two to five days. But the one with the preservative, the one that is canned and packaged, can last between 12 to 18 months. So the reason why so many testimonies end between two to five days is because preservative of Thanksgiving is not added. Are you hearing what the word is saying? So every time you want the testimony prolonged, the act of God extended, 
simply add the preservative of thanksgiving. Jeremiah chapter 13, from verse 15 to 17. He said, hear ye, and give ear. Be not proud. Be not proud. He says, give glory to the Lord your God before he causes darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. Before he corrupts the blessing. Before he allows the tomatoes to spoil. Add the preservative of thanksgiving. Number four. Thanksgiving provokes supernatural multiplication. 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 Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. And out of them, every one of them, shall proceed thanksgiving. And watch this. And the voice of them that make merry, not the voice of complaint, not the voice of murmuring. So God is checking what kind of voice is coming out. Don't think there's everyone that is talking in thanksgiving that is actually thanking God. There are some that complain in the place of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. But by now, things should have changed though. Father, yet I give you all the glory. They are waving their hands to Jesus. Lord, I just bless your name. You have tried at least. You have tried. I expected 10, but I got one. You tried. So they are complaining in the midst of thanksgiving. By now, I should have been promoted. But let me still thank you. At least I've not been sacked. I, I thank you. But it says, out of them shall proceed what? Thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And see the effect. I will multiply them. God will multiply somebody in this season. Yeah. And as it begins to multiply, he said, they shall not be few. Nothing reduces in the hand of a thanksgiver. So when you have little and you want it to turn to much, what do you do? Thank him. And they shall not be few. He said, I will yet glorify them. They shall not be small. That's the secret of this commission. As we keep thanking him, he keeps glorifying us. It keeps honoring us. It keeps changing our story. Some years ago, I was privileged to pastor somewhere in the U.S. And we were searching for a property to acquire. And then we went somewhere with some leaders of the church. And we began to look at the property. And in the course of looking at the property, someone came to us and told us that some other organization had already indicated interest and we were about to close on the sale of that property. So I told the leaders, let's go back. Let's leave, let's leave it, let's go back. The following morning, the next morning, as early as 7 a.m., we saw a lineup of vehicles, these huge trucks, heavy trucks, lineup of them, a couple of them, packed in front of the church. So I asked, who are those ones? And they said to me, they are the owners of the property you went to see yesterday. I said, okay, take them to the conference room. And they took them to the conference room and they were there waiting. Then we took some time, relaxing, allowing them to wait. <laughs> and then got to the conference room and they all got up, good morning, good morning, what can we do for you? Caucasians, all of them. And they said, we are the owners of the property you came to see yesterday. I said, yeah, but we were told that some other people are already closing on the property. They said, yes, that is true. But when we heard that Winner's Chapel came yesterday. Come on, come on, you are not hearing what I'm saying. When we heard, we heard that Winner's Chapel came yesterday and they are interested. We decided to come by ourselves. That is far away land. And um, I began to adjust the way I sat down on my chair. <laughs> and I said to them, why? Why? They said, we know you. We know the church. We know that for others, after they close, they have to go and wait for a bank to borrow their money to pay. But we know Winners Chapel, that if you say you want to buy, you can pay us today. <laughs> so so, so I, said, I said to them, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. And he will glorify them. They shall not be small. 
God will decorate somebody in this season. As a commission, we have enjoyed glorification. And you belong to this church family. Shame will never come near your tabernacle. You are shouting amen. Your voice is the loudest. So when the testimony and the breakthrough look small, the secret to multiplication is what? Thanksgiving. In John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 12, 5,000 men had followed Jesus. They had been following him for days and they were all hungry. And you know hungry men are angry men. When they get hungry, they can't hear any message you preach anymore. And Jesus began to perceive that the message is not going well. These people are hungry. And he lifted up his voice. Put verse 5, please. Verse 5. And Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. And he said unto them, Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Verse 6, quickly. And this is said to prove him. For he himself knew what he would do. Then Philip answered, and he said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, now said to Jesus, there is a lad here, there's a small boy here. He has little, five barley loaves and two small fish, not big fish, small. And he said, but what are they among so many? It is there, but it is insignificant. It is in our hands, but it is too little. And Jesus looked at him and smiled. And he said, I know what to do. Give me the little thing in my hand. And Jesus said to them, make the men to sit down. And there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And watch what Jesus did. He took that which was little. The five loaves and two fish. And when he had given thanks, he was thanking God for the little. And God said, that's the jackpot for multiplication. And he gave them, begin to distribute. And as they began to distribute, they, they discovered it was multiplying. As they were distributing, it was multiplying. As they were distributing, it was multiplying. Have you discovered that the more you give thanks, the more it multiplies? You thank God for the little in your house, it multiplies. You thank God for the little money in your account, it multiplies. That's why we are careful in this commission not to speak carelessly. Nothing finishes in our mouth. It may look like the quantity is reducing. We say it is multiplying. They say, do you have rice in your house? It has multiplied. And all of a sudden, somebody just lands 10 bags for you. Because you have already decreed it that it has multiplied. From today, nothing in your hand is permitted to finish. If you are saying amen, shout it like a true believer. Quickly, number five, God is the source of every breakthrough we experience. He's the source of every breakthrough that you and I ever experience. It's the fountain of our breakthroughs. Never forget, no man is sufficient of himself. We are not sufficient of ourselves. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. First Corinthians 4 and verse 7. The Bible says... For who make it differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now, if thou did receive it, why dost thou glory as if you had not received it? There is nothing in the hand or the life of any one of us that we did not receive. Everyone came to this world empty. So everything we have from the clothes we have, from the vehicles we drive, from the houses we, we live in, from the money in our bank, everything is as received. And it says, if therefore you have received it, why do you glory as if you did not receive it? I've discovered that any act of ingratitude is simply saying to God, I can make this happen by my hand. I don't need you. I can make this thing happen. 
So every time we display ingratitude, we complain and murmur, we are simply saying, God, you have not done anything. You have not done anything. You have not done anything. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 7. He said, but we have this treasure in 18 vessels. That the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. It shall be of God. It's the one behind the breakthroughs. If you take God out of the equation, all the man we experience is breakdowns. So you're experiencing breakthrough after breakthrough. In your place of work, breakthrough after breakthrough. In your business, breakthrough after breakthrough. Can I tell you what? It is the hand of God at work. Can I see you wave those hands one more time? And what is somebody saying to Jesus? Come on, you can say it louder. What are you saying to Jesus? The loudest you can right now. What are you saying? But as I begin to close, lack of thanksgiving destroys. It destroys just the same way pride destroys. It destroys. In fact, ingratitude in the realm of the spirit is a punishable offense. Punishable. Punishable. Psalm 28 and verse 5. Ingratitude in the realm of the spirit is a punishable offense. Because they regard not the works of the Lord. Not the oppressions of his hand. They can't see the hand of God in their lives. They, can't re- they, they don't regard the works of God. Watch what he said. He said he will destroy them. And he will not build them up. That will not be anybody's here's testimony. No one here will be destroyed. Come on, say a loud amen if you are there. So what is the charge? We began just before Shiloh, weeks before Shiloh, giving God thanks. We thanked and thanked and thanked our way into Shiloh. We thanked all through Shiloh. Now Shiloh ended, we continued with thanksgiving. And our father, the apostle over this great commission, gave us a clear instruction. All the remaining days of this month, no request. All thanksgiving. No more making demands. All thanksgiving. So as we begin and continue to thank God, all the remaining days of this year, watch this, God will crown this year with his goodness. Well, if there's a believer, your amen will show it. I said God will crown this year with his goodness and his path will continue to drop fatness. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Now in a moment, we'll so rise to dance. He said, let them praise him in the dance. That's how God said, when your thanksgiving turns to praise, God is provoked. But very quickly, I want to give opportunity to someone here. Because he says, take away the noise of your song. So the voice of your thanksgiving only resonates in the ears of God if you are his child. But adventure, you are here this morning in this second service on this Christmas Eve day. What a joy to tie your salvation to Christmas Eve for 2023. You are not yet born again. Or per adventure, you have drifted. You were once born again, but you have drifted. You are no more the way you used to be with Christ. What a joy. As we are celebrating the arrival of Jesus, the arms of Jesus are wide open. And he's saying to somebody, come back home. I want to give opportunity to anyone here. You are saying yes to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life quickly. Rise on your feet. Quickly all across the tabernacle. You are saying yes to Jesus. Yes, keep rising. Keep rising everywhere. Yes, they are standing. Or you are rededicating your life. Take that bold step. What a joy to tie your salvation to Christmas Eve of 2023. Your life will never remain the same. Your life will never remain the same. You want to join them? You are free to join them? Thank you, my brother. You want to join them? Someone else is joining. Quickly, quickly rise on your feet so that your praise can be acceptable. So your thanksgiving can be received. Thank you, Lord. Now, quickly, please bow your heads, lift up your right hand and say this word of prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From this moment, I am saved. 
I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Church, let's say it louder. Amen. Amen. Now, I pray for everyone who is standing right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious ones. Your grace has saved them today. Let the same grace preserve them. I decree that strength to keep pace with this race. Let it be released upon every one of them. None of them will fall by the wayside. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a louder, amen. amen. Please be comfortably seated. Complete filling those cards in your hand and pl place them in the hands of the officials beside you. Right in the pack given to you, there's a we love you card. At the end of this service, please take them to one of the um, entrances and you see some tents for new converts. Give the officials those cards and they will give you a gift from the church. And also take advantage of our Believers Foundation class that holds every Monday. Um, and you take that two Mondays or you can also take advantage of the virtual session. The link is displayed on the screen. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Church, please rise on your feet. Give Jesus the biggest clap you can right now. Hallelujah. Somebody who is truly grateful to God, shout thank you, Jesus. Somebody who can tell that there is no place for complaining or for murmuring, shout a louder, thank you, Jesus. Somebody who is sure that as you are thanking him, God is decorating you, multiplying you, lifting you, shout the loudest, thank you, Jesus. For the one that we have received, lift your hand to heaven and let's glorify God one more time. From the depth of our hearts, Lord Jesus, we do not take your doing, your word for granted. You have spoken, we have heard. You have declared and we have received your word. Thank you, mighty God. Why not now be very specific in thanking him for one thing or the other that you can recall? Oh, look at what God has done. Faithful in all his ways. Lifting us, decorating us. Like we heard many of us, not one day in the hospital, thank you for health and vitality. For many of us, not one accident, thank you for safety. For many of us, every one of us, sleeping and waking up, free. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. We don't take your doing for granted. We don't take your doing for granted. You have done so much for us. There is no way to tell it all. We have come to say thank you for your blessing, for your provision. Oh yes, we say thank you. I bless your name. I celebrate you for the gift of salvation. I'm not on the street. I'm not living in sin. I'm living in the light of life. I give you the praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. We have done it in words. We are going to do it in song. And we are also going to do it in dance. And we are going to do it after the order of David. We will do it shamelessly. We will do it energetically. We will do it wholeheartedly. Don't bother about your neighbor, your right or left. Do like David. He said, are we yet play? We heard it. Are we yet play before? Until they start saying, look at him, do it like a small boy. You haven't started. Until they say, look at her, do it like a small girl. You haven't started. You will dance the kind of dance that any unspiritual person will complain about. When they are complaining, God is decorating. Is somebody ready to praise God this morning? Choir, let's give God the glory. Hallelujah.
the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Hey, I'm up by one for you, oh, Baba.
Jesus. Lift your hand and wave it to Jesus. Appreciate him one more time. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. You are worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all the glory. Worthy of all the honor. Worthy of all the adoration. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your praises have ascended to heaven. God's blessing begins to descend upon your life. What no man can do for you, the mighty hand of God will give to you. He crowns the year with his goodness and all his past drop fatness. I declare today standing upon this altar and on the grace that is upon his servant that the fattest blessings of the year 
will locate you in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. For every one of us. All to the remaining days of this year. No evil befalls us. Everyone who may have traveled. They are returning back safely. It shall be good news all the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus precious name. Somebody believe say loud amen. It is done. In the name of Jesus Christ. You believe say loud amen. Be reminded that tomorrow is Christmas day. Give Jesus a big hand. We are gathering together. Here at the Faith Tabernacle, two services like we had, 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. We are coming to celebrate the greatest gift. There is no gift that can be comparable. Where will you and I be without Jesus? Our lives are simply evidences of this good gift. So we are coming together to celebrate him tomorrow. And as we do, all the blessings of Christ we keep speaking louder in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's our celebration time before God, so we are coming in our various attires. Amen. In our celebration attires to demonstrate our gratitude for this gift. Like I said before, minus Christ, where will we be? You and I will be nowhere. So because of him, we are gathered together to give him all the glory. It will be a glorious time in his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, remember next Sunday is our end of year Thanksgiving service. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is a very strange year because November we're giving praise to God. We entered December with pre-Shiloh Thanksgiving. We concluded Shiloh with Shiloh Thanksgiving. We continued from Shiloh Thanksgiving with more Thanksgiving. And we're ending the last day of the year with Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> so imagine what is waiting for you in 2024. It will be a year of unspeakable blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. So we gathered in the morning, two services, 6 and 8 a.m. In the morning, next Sunday, and then we have our crossover night into 2024. 10 p.m., the same Sunday, to be a glorious time in his presence, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In view of the massive travels and so forth, like was mentioned, WSF will not be holding. Also, the Leaders Foundation class, the live classes in the various locations will not hold until the new year. We also, however, the online classes are available for those who can connect to that. Um, all our new converts, you can take advantage of that. But the live classes commence in the new year. New year, new things. New year, great things. New year, wonderful things. New year, marvelous things. That will be our experience in Jesus' name. Lift your hand one more time and let's glorify God. Let's give him praise. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do so. If you came in after the worship offering was received, officials around the altar and various exits, carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering and be blessed. Keep rejoicing, celebrating God as you are congratulating your neighbors and departing. God bless you.